Oh hi! Hey, as many of you guys know, I've owned the LS2 powered C6 for a bit over a year now, and I've finally decided to make the first major, well somewhat major, bolt-on modification. And that project starts right now. I removed the stock LS2 manifold, and that's going where it belongs. Toys for life. My C6's LS2 engine is essentially stock, except for I have added a stock LS3, LS7 style air intake system, and of course the necessary tuning that is required for that, which I did myself with the help of HP tuners. One of the great things about C6 Corvettes is that by now all of them are at least 11 years old, and that means through the years there has been just about every modification you can think of made to these fantastic cars, and if you've got an open mind and you can do a little research, it's not too hard to determine which modifications make sense and which ones don't. One such modification that is pretty much universally agreed upon is making solid gains through a wide range of RPMs is the FAST LSXR 102 intake manifold. In fact, on the extensive research that I have done on this manifold for the LS2, I have never heard a bad thing, only good things and great things. Now part of that I'm sure is because FAST has been around for a long time, they've got a very good reputation and they're known for making many great dyno proven intake manifolds. The other part as to why the FAST LSXR 102 intake manifold picks up so much horsepower with the LS2 engine is because the LS2 stock intake manifold is, well, considered by many, including Tony Mamo, to be the worst performing cathedral intake manifold of them all. So when you swap in the best performing aftermarket cathedral intake manifold onto the engine that came with the worst manifold, that's kind of a double whammy on the plus side and really equals some nice performance gains. There is of course one downside and in my opinion the only negative of the fast intake manifold on the LS2 is its cost. Coming in at over $1,000, it is an expensive chunk of plastic, but in reality, you're not really paying for a chunk of composite. What you're paying for is all of the research and development that went into it, the equipment and the labor that goes into the manufacturing of a quality manifold, and of course, a little bit of profit. Now, most of us have limited resources in which to spend money on our Corvettes, and that includes me. And one thing I want to make crystal clear is that if I was after a massive power gain for the C6, I would probably skip on any other modifications for now, save my money, and buy a supercharger kit to pick up that 200 horsepower plus. That's exactly what I did with the C5 and I have zero regrets. With the C6, I've decided to take the naturally aspirated route, at least for the foreseeable future, and as a first somewhat major modification, I think the fast intake manifold makes sense because it'll complement just about any other LS2 engine mod a guy can think of, and there should be no drivability issues whatsoever. Now there's plenty of information out there in internet land as to how much horsepower the fast intake should add to the LS2, and here's a graph of the one that I hope materializes for my car. He picked up 21 horsepower and almost 30 foot-pounds of torque over a wide range of RPMs, which is a fantastic gain. Many people say with this modification, it's enough torque over enough RPMs that you can actually feel the difference on your built-in butt meter. Now, I'm a little skeptical that this will be possible because there's definitely a tendency to think you're feeling more horsepower. So with that in mind and being very cognizant of the placebo effect, I'm gonna give it a try anyway and see if I can very confidently say I feel a difference or not. Second, I have a ton of HP Tuner's data logs doing wide open pulls with the C6, and so after I add the fast intake, it should be able to pick up with the mass airflow sensor if the engine is able to take in more air. And if so, the computer will add more fuel, and when you add the two of them together, it equals more horsepower. And number three, as you may recall, earlier this year, I took the C6 to the drag strip to baseline it. And I did that for a reason because I wanted to be able to compare the results of any future mods with the original stock baseline numbers. And on that day when the air was 76 degrees, 
the best pass the C6 made was at 113.98 miles per hour. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to make it to the track one more time before winter sets in, but I'm sure going to try and if the C6 picks up a couple miles per hour, then we know for sure it's making more horsepower. Now let's get started with the installation and the first thing I'm going to do is blow off the top of the LS2 engine to minimize the chance of any dirt and debris falling into the cylinder heads when the stock intake is removed. First step is to remove the negative battery cable and set it aside. Then I'm going to remove the cap from the fuel injection Schrader valve and release any pressurized fuel into a rag. Next, using a fuel injection connector separator tool, insert it over the line, push it in, and disconnect the line. This may take a few tries, but push it in all the way and it will separate. Have a rag ready and under the line before you separate the lines. Then tape a piece of cloth over each line to prevent any debris from getting in, which could easily clog your fuel injectors when you reconnect things later. Here is the old LS2 air intake that I removed and replaced last year, and now I'll go ahead and remove the LS3 LS7 style air intake from the car. Now it's the throttle body's turn to be removed, which is done by removing the electrical connector followed by the four bolts that hold it to the intake. Now go ahead and remove the evap line from the intake. The clip that holds it in place may break as it's very brittle. I'll include a link to new ones in the description in case you need one. Next remove the brake booster hose from the vacuum canister and plug it. It's also a good idea to remove the clamp so it doesn't get caught on something as you will need to fish it through towards the intake manifold and snake it around the oil pressure sending unit when the intake manifold is being removed. Now go ahead and remove the fuel injector connector wires and pull the harness plugs out of the fuel rail on both sides. My fuel injector harness is very stiff and kind of brittle, so be careful and it may take a little persuasion. Hopefully you disconnected the battery ground earlier, right? Good, now it's time to remove the power cable from the alternator and fish it out from underneath the fuel rail. Next we can go ahead and remove the intake manifold mounting bolts. There's five of them on each side. Go ahead and break them loose with a socket wrench, then use the DeWalt to speed things up. The two bolts that are under the cowl will need a ratchet to remove, and the kit provides new bolts so these old ones won't be reused. Now go ahead and remove the connector from the manifold absolute pressure sensor and move the plug out of the way. Then down low on the passenger side front of the manifold is the rubber hose that connects the top of the valley cover to the intake. It can be kind of stubborn, so keep pulling on it and it will come off. Now it looks like the front of the manifold is free. The large brake booster line connects to the very back of the intake manifold and it routes behind the tall oil pressure sending unit, so you can't simply pull the intake manifold forward, plus you can't lift the intake manifold high enough for the booster line to go over the pressure sensor as the manifold will hit the cowl. The easiest solution is to have an assistant carefully feed the brake booster line in and around the oil pressure sending unit as you move the intake forward. Carefully vacuum all of the crowd out from on top of the valley cover and then fill all of the intake ports with paper towels to prevent any crud from getting inside and around your intake valves as you further brush and use solvents to clean the entire area. Now it's time for my least favorite part. You have to remove the valley cover bolts and do this one at a time and replace them with the provided special thin allen head bolts to allow for extra clearance for the manifold. Maybe my 5mm allen head socket is worn out, but when torquing them down to step I managed to strip out two of the heads. I remedied the situation by modifying two of the stock bolts with a grinder making their heads thinner and they both threaded in and torqued to spec without issue. Next, remove the four bolts holding the fuel rail to the intake manifold and carefully pry up on the rail to dislodge all eight injectors from the intake manifold. Then go ahead and clean all of the injectors with a clean cloth and solvent and set it carefully out of the way. Now Fast has this thing packaged extremely well and the UPS truck could probably get in an accident and the manifold would probably still be okay. 
Hmm, looks like our friends in California might actually be able to use one of these legally. The first step with the new intake manifold is to remove the shell from the rest of the manifold by removing the three bolts at the rear and the two bolts at the front of the manifold. Then at least for my LS2C6, I got to drill a hole in the front of the manifold so that the map sensor is able to sense manifold pressure. Once that's completed, the map sensor seal is lubed with silicone grease and the sensor is installed. Time to put the cover back on and the instructions call for a thin film of RTV on the seal located in the rear corner of the manifold before doing so, and so we'll carefully take care of that. Then the cover is placed back on, making sure everything is lined up properly, and the five bolts that we just removed are given a dab of Loctite and then torqued to spec. Well, that's going to do it for part one, guys. Part two will be coming shortly, where we'll finish up the fast installation. Then, of course, we'll take a peek at the tune. We'll go for a test drive or four, and then we'll look at the various things that I talked about to see if we can verify that the fast LSXR 102 is making any additional horsepower or not. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit that thumbs up below so YouTube knows to share it. Subscribe so you don't miss part two. And most of all, thanks for watching.